In today's video, we're going to survey and briefly summarize the book of 1 Samuel. Then afterwards, as always, I'll share some helpful resources, so stick around until the end. As for the author, the author is anonymous. We know that Samuel wrote a book, and it is very possible that he wrote part of this book as well. Other possible contributors to 1 Samuel are the prophets and historians Nathan and Gad, 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 29. As for the date of writing, originally the books of 1 and 2 Samuel were one book. The translators of the Septuagint separated them, and we have retained that separation ever since. The events of 1 Samuel span approximately 100 years, from 1100 BC to 1000 BC. The events of 2 Samuel cover another 40 years. The date of writing then would be sometime after 960 BC. As for the purpose of writing, 1 Samuel records the history of Israel in the land of Canaan as they move from the rule of judges to being a unified nation under kings. Samuel emerges as the last judge, and he anoints the first two kings, Saul and David. Here are some key verses. But when they said, Give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord told him, Listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 6 and 7. You acted foolishly, Samuel said. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now, your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people, because you have not kept the Lord's command. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 13 and 14. But Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 22 and 23. As for a brief summary, the book of 1 Samuel can be neatly divided into two sections. The life of Samuel, chapters 1 through 12, and the life of Saul, chapters 13 through 31. The book starts with the miraculous birth of Samuel in answer to his mother's earnest prayer. As a child, Samuel lived and served in the temple. God singled him out as a prophet, chapter 3, verses 19 through 21. And the child's first prophecy was one of judgment on the corrupt priests. The Israelites go to war with their perennial enemies, the Philistines. The Philistines capture the Ark of the Covenant and are in temporary possession of it. But when the Lord sends judgment, the Philistines return the Ark. Samuel calls Israel to repentance, chapter 7, verses 3-6, through 6, and then to victory over the Philistines. The people of Israel, wanting to be like other nations, desire a king. Samuel is displeased by their demands, but the Lord tells him that it's not Samuel's leadership they are rejecting, but his own. After warning the people of what having a king would mean, Samuel anoints a Benjamite named Saul, who was crowned in Mitzvah, chapter 10, verses 17 through 25. Saul enjoys initial success, defeating the Ammonites in battle, chapter 11. But then he makes a series of missteps. He presumptuously offers a sacrifice, chapter 13. He makes a foolish vow at the expense of his own son, Jonathan, chapter 14. And he disobeys the Lord's direct command, chapter 15. As a result of Saul's rebellion, God chooses another to take Saul's place. Meanwhile, God removes his blessing from Saul, and an evil spirit begins goading Saul towards madness. Chapter 16, verse 14. Samuel travels to Bethlehem to anoint a youth named David as the next king. Chapter 16. Later, David has his famous confrontation with Goliath, the Philistine, and becomes a national hero. Chapter 17. David serves in Saul's court marries Saul's daughter, and is befriended by Saul's son. Saul himself grows jealous of David's success and popularity, and he attempts to kill David. David flees, and so begins an extraordinary period of adventure, intrigue, and romance. With supernatural aid, David narrowly but consistently eludes the bloodthirsty Saul, chapters 19 through 26. Through it all, 
David maintains his integrity and his friendship with Jonathan. Near the end of the book, Samuel has died and Saul is a lost man. On the eve of a battle with Philistia, Saul seeks for answers. Having rejected God, he finds no help from heaven and he seeks counsel from a medium instead. During the seance, Samuel's spirit rises from the dead to give one last prophecy. Saul would die in battle the next day. The prophecy is fulfilled. Saul's three sons, including Jonathan, fall in battle and Saul commits suicide. As for foreshadowings, the prayer of Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 1 through 10 makes several prophetic references to Christ. She extols God as her rock, and we know from the gospel accounts that Jesus is the rock upon whom we should build our spiritual houses. Paul refers to Jesus as the rock of offense to the Jews, Romans chapter 9 verse 33. Christ is called the spiritual rock, who provided spiritual drink to the Israelites in the wilderness, just as he provides living water to our souls, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, and John chapter 4, verse 10. Hannah's prayer also makes reference to the Lord who will judge the ends of the earth, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 10, while Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 and 32 refers to Jesus as the Son of Man, who will come in glory to judge everyone. Here are some practical application. The tragic story of Saul is a study in wasted opportunity. Here was a man who had it all, honor, authority, riches, good looks, and more. Yet he died in despair, terrified of his enemies and knowing he had failed his nation, his family, and his God. Saul made the mistake of thinking he could please God through disobedience. Like many today, he believed that a sensible motive will compensate for bad behavior. Perhaps his power went to his head and he began to think he was above the rules. Somehow, he developed a low opinion of God's commands and a high opinion of himself. Even when confronted with his wrongdoing, he attempted to vindicate himself, and that's when God rejected him, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 16 through 28. Saul's problem is one we all face, a problem of the heart. Obedience to God's will is necessary for success, and if we in pride rebel against him, we set ourselves up for loss. David, on the other hand, did not seem like much at first. Even Samuel was tempted to overlook him, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 6 and 7. But God seized the heart and saw in David a man after his own heart, 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. The humility and integrity of David, coupled with his boldness for the Lord and his commitment to prayer, set a good example for all of us. Want to learn more? Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Visit gotquestions.org for more great content and check out the details section below this video. There's one book I recommend along with several links to related questions. If you'd like to learn about Bible Munch or if you're interested in bite-sized devotionals, subscribe to Bible Munch on YouTube. It's linked right here. Now remember, got questions? The Bible has answers. We'll help you find them.